Hey cactus friends, it's Jenny from Cookies Cacti. Now you may be asking why are we looking at a whole row of different types of soils and soil mediums? And the reason is, have you ever wondered about whether the choice of a soil medium for growing cactus really matters? I have, and hopefully some of you have had the same question and will find something interesting in this video series that I'm planning to do which is I'm going to test about, I think, six different types of soil mediums for growing astrophytum seeds that I collected from my own plants. Because I'm trying to find like the fairest way to compare the six different types of soils and soil mixes. The soils that I'm going to be looking at are going to be everything from mixes that you can find from your everyday big box store, at least in the United States, to a soil mix that maybe you can only find at more of a specialty nursery, you know, not a big, big box store, maybe your local nursery, all the way to very premium soils that you can find on Etsy. I personally have always wondered, you know, these premium soils, do they really make a difference? So I actually spent money purchased a couple of these soils from Etsy and I'm planning to test it, you know, just for education's sake, for information's sake. So let's go over the potting mixes that I'm going to try. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you how much each of these bags or boxes cost, how much the equivalent cost is for a single two and a half inch square nursery pot. This nursery pot I purchased from Greenhouse Megastore. It's their two and a half inch, I think, tall black form pot. So the top of the pot is two and a half inches by two and a half inches. The bottom of the pot is one and a half inches by one and a half inches. So I'm going to calculate the volume based on the average of that. So we're going to take an average, let's say it's two inches by two inches, and then the depth of the pot up to the bottom of the lip of the pot is about three inches. So we're saying two by two by three, which is 12 cubic inches. So we'll talk about how much it costs to fill one of these two and a half inch pots. <laughs> so I've done a little homework to prepare for this. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> All right, let's start with the Soil mediums that you can find at your big box store, at least in the United States. Let's start all the way over here. So this is miracle Grow Cactus Palm and Citrus Potting Mix. One of these bags is eight quarts, and I purchased this from Home Depot. I believe you can find it at Lowe's, you can find it at Walmart. This one bag was $6.97. If we do the calculation, that's equivalent to just about 18 cents to fill one of these two and a half inch pots. The next soil mix that we're going to look at is a very familiar mix that for those of you who have been watching my A Lazy Way to Grow Cactus from Seed, you've seen this a million times. So I do a mix of about three to one um, miracle Grow Perlite to miracle Grow Seed Starting Potting Mix. This is basically peat moss. Each of these bags is $6.97, so it's just like the cactus soil. But in this case, you know, if you're gonna do this mix, you have to buy both bags. So you're gonna be spending $13.94 for both of them. By the way, all of these prices are before sales tax. So each of these bags is also eight quarts. And if we do the calculation, it will be the same as the cactus soil per two and a half inch pot. So just about 18 cents per pot. The next soil that we're going to look at is this cactus mix by Unigrow. This is a really popular soil mix or soil for cactus growers. I've seen this mentioned many, many times. Uh, you can, I can't find this at my local box, big box store, so this I purchased from Arizona Cactus Sales. It is one cubic feet and it was $20. So if we were to fill one of these two inch, two and a half inch pots, that equates to 16 cents to fill one of these pots. So let's see, this is soil mix number three. 
All right, so soil mix number four is gonna be interesting. It's actually Rob Romero's mix, and he shared this on one of Mesa Garden's um, YouTube videos. So what Rob uses is 60% pumice. He uses quarter inch pumice, 20% sifted mushroom compost, and then 20% native soil. So this mushroom compost I purchased from Home Depot. It was $2.48 and it's one cubic foot. So that's very inexpensive. And I'm gonna consider your native soil to be free. And then for pumice, I purchased my pumice from Arizona Cactus Sales. You can't find this at your big box stores. You're most likely gonna to have to go to your local nursery or online, or you'll find some way to find pumice or maybe a pumice equivalent. So this is one cubic foot and it was $20 and I purchased it from Arizona Cactus Sales. So if we do the math on the ratio that Rob uses, then the equivalent to fill one of these two and a half inch pots is 10 cents to fill. So, you know, per pot, this is the cheapest, this Rob Romero mix. I've never tried his mix before, but I'm really, really curious because I think he's been using it for a really long time. And he's using it with um, growing plants at Mesa Garden now. So very, very curious about this mix. So that is mix number four. Now we come to our two premium soils that I purchased off of Etsy. And I apologize, the sun is going down, so it's getting dark. I purchased this seed starting soil kit from East Coast Kamanchaka. Uh, he has a YouTube channel, he's quite active on Instagram, and he has, I think, his own shop online as well as a shop on Etsy for sure, and I purchased this off of Etsy. So this kit includes drainage rocks, you can see there. It includes the soil itself, and it includes top dressing. So quite a complete kit. Now he doesn't advertise his kit as saying that this will grow way better than any other mix, no. I think he is more of providing you a kit where everything is already here and you really don't have to buy anything else with regards to a soil medium um, to sow seeds. This was shipped to me in one of the small USPS flat rate boxes and it was like bulging to the seams. Um, but there were no instructions included with how to use this. So I did send uh, Manuel, the owner uh, of the company, a uh, question about how to use all of this. And he sent me a YouTube video that shows how to use it. So, and he was really quick in his response. I think the next day he had given me an answer. So that was great. Um, so I'm gonna plan to just follow his instructions on uh, using his mix. In, when I do my seed sowing. So when I received this package, the packaging was a little bit weird and I have a picture of it, I'll show it now. It was not sent with the Ziploc bags. Actually, I put um, the topsoil and the soil into the Ziploc bags. It was actually packaged in what looked like maybe like a grocery produce bag, just one plastic bag. This was on like the lower part of the bag and this was like on the upper part of the bag. The problem with that packaging is if I only use a portion of it, there's no way to really reseal the soil, like to store it away for future use. So I ended up having to repackage it myself. Um, so this, I, you know, I can use part of it and then I can seal it up and save it up for future use. And the rocks were also loose like this in the box. It's just a little bit odd, but you know, everything that he advertised would be sent was sent. Um, I'm going to put up a picture of what the listing looked like for this. It came in two different sizes and I purchased the smaller size. Um, and of course, the more you buy, of course, the more that you're going to save, the more value you're going to give. So the way that I purchased it is the most expensive with the small size. And then he has some information on the ingredients. And so um, I'll put that information up as now as well. And if you want to read it, I suggest that you just pause the video and you can read the, the description because I believe he might be sold out now. I haven't checked recently. So this whole total is roughly about a quart. You know, we were looking at eight quarts 
on all the miracle grows. We're looking at one cubic foot on everything else. This is just about a quart. You can see that the soil is not completely filling up the quart bag, but you know, you're supposed to fill up the bottom of the pot with the rocks. So maybe everything combined is slightly more than a quart. So the price on this box or this kit was $22.50, and that included shipping. So the equivalent price to fill a two and a half inch nursery pot is $4.68. So considerably more expensive than you know, using these bags of soil. So it'll be really interesting to see how the seeds do and how the plants do using this mix. Last but not least, we come to our final premium soil. This comes from a seller on Etsy called Mike's Rare Plants LLC. This is called the Lofo Pro Soil or Lofo Pro Seed Starter. Let me find it. Lofo Pro Seed Soil. And uh, this was shipped like this. So these were all the Ziploc bags that uh, Mike shipped his uh, soil and everything in. And it's actually kind of interesting. So he does advertise his soil medium as being really, really amazing. I'm gonna put a picture of the uh, listing for this seed soil up right now. And I'll say that his seed soil is not readily available on his Etsy site. I actually, I knew that he had this kind of seed soil um, because I follow him on Instagram. And I messaged him on Etsy asking if he had uh, any of this available. And he actually put up the posting just for me. And it comes in two different sizes. And on this case, I also purchased the smaller size. So this is one quart of seed soil. I have a picture of the box when I received it. This was also shipped to me in a small USPS flat rate box and it was bulging to the seams. This is one quart worth of seed soil. And then the interesting thing is that at the bottom of the box, he has instructions on how to use his soil. Plus there's a couple of extra bags if you see here. There's this, which is his bacteria complex. I thought this was top dressing, but it's not. It's bacteria complex. And then there's this, which is his worm castings. And he has very specific instructions that these two are not to be used with the seed sowing. These are to be used after it's time to acclimate the seedlings to irregular air. And he's he has very specific instructions on how to do that that comes in the box and it's also part of his uh, item description in his shop. And now I'm going to put up some series of screenshots of the product description and again I'm going to recommend that if you want to read the product description I think he even has some listings of the ingredients that are in the soil. Um, go ahead and press pause and you can read it in detail. This whole package was $17 and the shipping was $8.10. So the total of everything here from Mike's Rare Plants LLC was $25.10. So if we do the calculation on how much it costs to fill one of these pots, at least in the bottom rim, bottom of the lip, it is $5.22. So I mean, this is the most expensive per pot out of everything. 18 cents per pot. Rob Romero's is 10 cents per pot. The Unigro is 16 cents per a pot. And then we're talking over $4 per pot on the East Coast Kamenchaka and over $5 per pot on the Mike's Rare Plants LLC. I will say that just by looking at what the soil looks like, from the two premium soils, they do look different from what you would find here. So just visually looking at it, you know, it's not like they just went and bought some store-bought mixes and then threw them in a bag and sold it like that. No, I don't think so. This doesn't look anything like the, the stuff that I see in the big box brands. All right, next I'm gonna show you the seeds I'm gonna sow and what my plans are.
All right, so here is the plan. I have a 1020 tray. It can hold 32 of these two and a half inch pots. So what I'm going to do is that out of these 32 pots, these ones at the edge, I'm gonna sew something else that's not part of the experiment. And the reason is I wanna keep the environment from pot to pot in here as close as possible. So you can see, you know, this side is all touching that edge. This side is all touching that edge. But it wouldn't be fair if I used this one, you know, that's touching this outside edge, whereas the other seeds are all interior to the, to the tray, if that makes any sense. So I've already made all my labels here. Again, I use pencil to write on these labels because pencil is very resistant to like humidity. Pen will just like melt at some point. It will come off of your label, but pencil works really well. Um, so each of these rows of four will be a different type of soil. So what I'm going to use is I harvested a whole bunch of Astrophytum hybrid seeds off of my various plants. Interestingly, different mother plants have slightly different colors of seeds. And I don't think you can tell. Oh, you can maybe kind of tell. Like these seeds are kind of lighter in color, whereas these seeds are really dark. Now it's a mix of the mother plants in here, a complete mix. But what I'm going to do is because I have so many of these seeds, I actually have enough to use for all this entire experiment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do three out of the four pots. I'm going to do the astrophytum seeds and I'm going to sow 25 seeds per pot. And I'm going to try to pick the seeds that I feel are the most uniform looking to try to make the experiment as fair as I possibly can. So for the fourth pot on each of these rows, I'm going to sow Areocarpus seeds that I harvested off of my own plant. This happens to be Areocarpus retusus. And I'm also going to do about 25 seeds per pot. I think I have enough here. So I'm basically going to sow these seeds in as fair of an environment as possible, as even as we can be. It's never going to be perfect, but it's as, it's as good as we can do. And I feel like if we're sowing 75 astrophytum seeds per soil type, it's not a big sample size when it comes to growing from seed, but it's not that small either, but it's all I can do. I mean, in reality, if you really want to do a thorough comparison, you need to sow a lot of seeds so that you can throw out those statistical variations, if you will. But this is what we're going to do. So we'll sow the seeds. I'm going to cover this with my plastic dome, and we're just going to leave it and see how the different soils compare to each other. It's going to come down to germination rate and maybe in growth speed. You know, I really don't know what to expect. So I will go ahead and sow all the seeds and then cover it up, maybe come back and show you, though there's really not that much to see at that point. And then I'm going to wait and then we'll see what happens. All right, so I finally have time now to actually get this soil ready. I'm going to work on getting everything planted. I'm going to do everything at once. I'm not going to break it up so that everything is sowed on the same day. So I'm starting with Mike's rare plant, um, his seed starter, and I just want to show you what it looks like up close. And uh, the description I put up earlier of his listing of this seed starting soil, I believe contains the ingredients of what's in here, but this is what it looks like, right? So I'm going to go ahead, I am using um, just tap water on everything. I'm going to go ahead and wet this down and then go get the pots ready and plant my seeds. So I've wetted this soil down. I don't know if this lighting is very good. It smells really good. Like I like the smell of soil, but you can see it's incredibly organic. I mean, we could tell when it was dry, but when it's wet, it kind of clumps. You see that? Um, yeah, so this is what it looks like when it's wetted down. I'm gonna go ahead and fill up my pots with the soil and then go plant the seeds and I'll be back. I finished sowing the seeds using the Mike's Rare Plants seed starter mix and then I'm using just my own pumice as top dressing. I just have a layer of it here and I've wetted everything down with just tap water. I'm going to go ahead and put this into my tray with a dome on it and then I'm going to repeat the same procedure with the rest of the soils. Next we have East Coast Kamanchaka soil is his seed starter really really interesting there's actually this red color stuff in it 
I don't know what that is. Definitely something I've never seen before. Very, very interesting. Hmm. I don't know if the color comes through on the camera, but this is what it looks like when it's dry. And then next I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to use tap water and wet this down. By the way, I also forgot that East Coast Common Chaco, his seed sewing kit comes with these rocks. I don't know what kind of rocks these are. In his YouTube instructions, he puts these rocks at the bottom of his growing containers. So I'm doing the same thing with my nursery pots. So because I'm putting these rocks at the bottom of the pot, then we won't need as much soil per pot, which is good because I'm going to go try the soil and some other stuff as well. Here's the soil wetted down. And it's also organic, but I feel like it's not as organic as Mike's rare plant seed starter soil. Uh, there's a lot of very fine grit in here, like very, very fine, like that. So this is what it looks like when it's wet down. All right, so I'm gonna go and fill up those pots and sow the seeds and then get them into the tray. Oh, and another thing that East Coast Kamanchaka Seed Starter Kit comes with is the top dressing. So I'm gonna use the top dressing that came with the kit and, instead of my own pumice. So that'll be the one difference for this soil versus the rest is the, the top soil actually, or top dressing comes from the kit itself. I had to add a little bit more soil and Look what came out of the bag. There's a little sprout in there. Hmm, you see this? Oops, see? It's a little sprout that came out of the bag. Hmm. As I was wetting down the soil, there was another piece of, I don't know what that is. It, this was in the soil. Just slightly disappointed because this is so expensive, like such a premium soil, and there's stuff like sprouts and this in there. I don't know, maybe I'm expecting too much. So here's the East Coast Kamanchaka seed starting mix with his top dressing all wetted down. All the seeds are sowed, and it's ready to go into the tray. I finished sowing the seeds for the pots with the two premium soils. So those are ready to go. And next I'm gonna move on to our you know, big box or nursery bought soils. But I wanna show you something because I just sewed four two and a half inch pots with each of these soils. And I wanna show you how much soil is left over. So on the left here is Mike's Rare Plants. I basically have half a bag still that I can use. But on East Coast Kamanchaka, you'll see that there's a lot of this inorganic stuff. So he's got the rocks that you use to put on the bottom of your container or your pot. And then I still have top dressing left. But as far as the soil, this is all that's left. I don't know if this is even enough to fill one more pot. Whereas I think with Mike's Rare Plants, I could fill probably another four pots with the amount of soil that's left over. So in reality, I don't think the volume of soil is really equal here. I mean, there's a lot of inorganics in the East Coast Common Chaka kit, but there's not a lot you can do with what's left over on the organic. So I feel like with regards to the price of a pot of, let's say, seed starting soil or the kit, Mike's Rare Plants is actually less expensive than East Coast Common Chaka per two and a half inch pot. So East Coast Common Chaka's seed sowing kit to me is the most expensive per two and a half inch. Because I think you can probably get possibly five two and a half inch pots of soil out of East Coast Common Chaka's kit Whereas I think you can probably get about seven to eight two and a half inch pots out of the Lofo Pro seed soil from Mike's Rare Plants. So now I'm gonna go on and sow a bunch of seeds using the commercial mixes. But um, because I have so much left over from Mike's Rare Plants, I'm gonna use this to sow some more seeds that I typically really struggle with um, with my typical miracle Grow mix. So I'm really excited to do that. So those will be like, it's not part of this experiment. 
it's just going to be extras for me to try this out. Next, we have the Miracle Grow Cactus Palm and Citrus Potting Mix. Now, this one is not you know, advertised for seedlings. This is just for cactus in general. So you can see that it has a lot of very coarse particles in here, including like little pieces of wood chip. I saw a really big piece. Oh, look at this. Giant thing. See, I have to take this out because uh, this will hamper the seedlings from growing. But that's not the fault of the, you know, of Miracle Grow. This is supposed to be an adult cactus soil. You can see it is very, very organic. If I were to use this with an adult plant, I would definitely be supplementing with a lot of pumice. I would do my standard like a three to one with pumice being the three. So that's what it looks like when it's dry. I'll come back after I've wetted it down. All right, I have to say, I just poured water in here and I really don't like working with this like this. Do you see the waters there? It's not being absorbed easily by the soil mix. It's just kind of pooling over there. You can see like all the soil mix is sort of floating. Oh, this is really difficult to work with and it's really dusty as I'm doing this. I don't like this at all as a like a seedling mix. I don't know, maybe because I started with the premium stuff and that stuff was really nice to wet down. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this. Okay, I'm going to continue working on this. Gosh, look at how clumpy this is. How can this be cactus soil? It's so organic. Look at this. This is terrible. I don't know, like, it's, this might work really well as the organic portion if you add pumice to it, but by itself, I would never use this by itself on a cactus. Look at it, it's like clumpy. If you press on it, it cakes like, um, like mud or clay. I'm gonna use this to sow seeds. Let's see what happens. Next, we have the Unigro Cactus Mix. Now, this is also not you know, a seed starter. It's not advertised as a seed starter. It's really for mature plants. But you can see this is quite a bit more gritty than that miracle Grow mix. This looks a lot better. Although I would still, like for my adult plants, I still cut this with uh, a bunch of pumice, but looking better than that miracle Grow for sure. I'm gonna go wet this down and then show you again. Yeah, this mixed with water pretty well. You can see there's some pretty coarse materials in here, which is not unexpected for uh, cactus soil. So that's what it looks like when it's watered down. All right, very gritty, coarse. All right, we're gonna use this one next. This next mix is really interesting. This is Rob Romero's mix. So it's 60% pumice, 20% mushroom compost, and 20% native soil. So you can see all the pumice I've got on top. And then underneath you've got the mushroom compost, which is basically like a bunch of broken down wood. And then we've got my, my native soil, which really is just like clay. Like this is hardened if I, I can break it up like that. So I'm going to kind of break down these clumps of clay, which is my native quote-unquote soil. I'm going to mix these all together, but let me mix it a little bit right now so you can kind of see what it looks like. Very, very gritty. Very, very coarse. And then we've got like the fine bits from my native soil, which is clay. But yeah, very interesting though. Huh? I'm going to wet it down and then show you what it looks like. Okay, so before I wet it down, I just broke up like a whole bunch of these clumps of clay and mixed it together, and it's actually quite beautiful of a mix. I'm surprised. I could see using this just for um, adult plants. I think Rob uses this for adult plants. See, it's actually quite beautiful. Okay, I'm going to wet it down now. Wow, this is really interesting. So this is the Rob Romero mix wet, wetted down. Look at that. Because you see my clay, my native soil clay, when it gets wet, it just it's just like mud, like 
really, really thick mud. Just imagine you know, playing with clay or working with clay when it's wet. So when this mix is wet, look at that. It's basically like all this coarse material with mud, clay mud in between. And that clay stuff really holds on to moisture. So this is very, very interesting. I hope it comes out through the camera, what it, like what it really looks like. Hard to say. Very interesting. It's like mud, <laughs> like mud mixed with a lot of coarse material in it. Very, very interesting. Okay, I'm going to go pot this up and get the seed sowed. And last but not least is the seed starting soil mix that many of you are very familiar with if you've watched my A Lazy Way to Grow Cactus from Seed video along, along with a, some of my other seedling videos. So this is the miracle Grow Seed Starter, which is basically peat moss mixed with miracle Grow Perlite. And I've mixed it here three to one. So three parts perlite and to one part seed starter. And this is what it looks like when it's dry. You can see it's quite gritty, but with fine grit from the perlite. So I'm going to wet this down and then show you again what it looks like. This is what it looks like with moisture added, water. See, it's nice and gritty. This is, um, you know, a mix that I know pretty well. We've seen that it works, or at least it seems to work pretty well for Copiapoa, but the jury is still out on Astrophytum and. I've had terrible success for Areocarpus, but I don't know if it's because of the soil mix or because of grower error. So we're gonna try it again. And then we'll also get to see how this works for Astrophytum. So I'm gonna go pot this up, sow the seeds, and then meet you back. It is now the next day. It hasn't been quite 24 hours, but it's getting close because it's actually already in the evening now. So last night I spent probably about three to four hours filling all these pots and preparing all the soil, sowing all the seeds. Um, and it took quite a while because, so what I did per type of soil was I did four pots, three pots of Astrophytum and one pot of Areocarpus for each type of soil. And I did 25 seeds each per pot. So we're talking 600 seeds that I hand picked and hand placed into these pots. So that took quite some time. Uh, here on the end, the two ends of the tray are, I guess you could say like a, a row of dummy pots in the sense that they're not part of this experiment. Um, and I sowed, I think that the Lofo Pro soil from Mike's Rare Plants, I was able to fill three pots. And so I sowed Areocarpus, I believe. And then, you know, the name of that soil, Lofo Pro, is kind of a hint at the type of genus of plant that that soil should be good for. So I do have seeds of that type of plant from my own plant um, that I sowed into the Lofo Pro soil. So those are in the ends, I think. And then what I did is I used all the leftover East Coast Kamenchaka soil, and then I used my adult soil, which is 75% pumice and 25% cactus soil. In this case, the cactus soil was the Unigrow cactus soil. I've never tried sowing seeds in my adult mix, so this will be interesting. And I think I sowed Areocarpus and Thelocactus hexadroph hexadrophorus. Oh gosh. But basically all the seeds that are in here are seeds from my own plant. The other thing that took a while was that after each type of soil, I would go outside and rinse out that bowl that I was using to wet down the soil. So it was like, you know, prepare the soil, wet it down, fill the pots, sow the seeds, then go back outside, clean the, clean the bowl. Um, and then the other thing was sometimes I didn't measure the soil right, so I'd have to go get more soil, wet it down again. Yeah, it was a lot, but I think it's worth it to give this experiment a try. So out of the six type of soils, the ones that were the most difficult to handle and to use was the straight out of the bag miracle Grow uh, cactus soil. That just didn't work well with water. I mean, you can mix it in, but it was like so organic and the, 
mix was so fine, it was hard to get the water in there. I, I did not enjoy working with that soil, but you know, if you cut down that soil with a lot of inorganics, it's probably fine. But pure, <laughs> pure miracle Grow cactus soil with nothing to cut it down, it's very organic. Um, the second type of soil that was more difficult to use as well, I didn't like the, the feel of it, was the Rob Romero mix. And it's be all because my native soil is clay. So when it was dry, it actually looked really beautiful. But when I wet it down, that clay basically became like a sloppy mud. So it was like a, a muddy soil mixture when I got it wet. So there's basically like a coating of mud between all of the chunkier mushroom compost and the pumice. So I, I didn't enjoy working with that kind of soil, but it is what it is. Give it a try, see how it performs. And then the two premium soils, the My Seed Starter mix with the miracle Grow Seed Starter and the Perlite, and then the Unigrow Cactus Soil, those were all fairly easy to use. And uh, the two premium soils and the Unigrow was just kind of straight out of their bag where there's not too much preparation. So yeah, here we go. Let's see what happens. So what I've done special for this tray is that you'll notice it's spanning, like I dedicated an entire shelf for this tray, because normally I put my trays like this, so that I can fit two trays per shelf, but if I do it like this, the light that reaches the pots at the edge of the tray, hang, hanging over the edge of the shelf, is not quite even. So I decided I would actually <laughs> cookie. I would actually just dedicate an entire shelf. So if I place the tray like this under the light, we get definitely a more even distribution of light than the you know the trays like this. This is now you know by no means an error prone or perfect experiment, but it's something. So what I'm going to do is just come and periodically check in on how the, the seedlings are doing. We'll check what actually germinates, and then as time goes on, we can see how their their the seedling health and their rate of growth and all that good stuff by the way i also have um i use 50 percent shade cloth for newly sowed seeds this this light is pretty intense it gives them a little bit extra protection and there's some uh, like some you know heat that comes from the light so it keeps the trays nice and warm cookie cookie and the other thing that you'll note is that you can see that this is this uh, dome is kind of foggy and that's just the condensation inside the tray. The other thing is that um, this dome, you can see that it has like this lip here. It's a little bit slanted. So those pots are really squished in there. And so it's kind of pushing the, the lip of the dome out, creating a gap between the tray and the dome. So I, I put these clips on here just to give a tighter seal between the dome and the tray. And it's the same thing on the other side. So here we go. Let's check in later and see how this goes. I'm very curious on the results. Four days have passed and we have liftoff. So I've been checking on this tray every day just to see if anything was coming up. Yesterday I checked, I didn't see anything, but today I do. Now this is going to be really hard to see because I've got the dome, it's got condensation, I've got the reflection of the grow lights on the plastic, but let's see if we can see anything. This is so difficult. This is really difficult for me to film because I cannot see my, my screen, so I can't see what in the world I'm looking at. Um, but what? I'll just verbally, let me try to verbally report what I see. So some of the most obvious germination is actually coming from the East Coast Kamanchaka pots, which are these these one pots here that have the different color top dressing from everything else. Everything else is pumice. This top dressing came with the East Coast Kamanchaka kit. So this is really interesting. And I also see some sprouts coming up on the Mike's Rare Plant uh, Lofo Pro soil. I see like a few in there, but the East Coast Kamanchaka is really, really obvious that there's a lot coming up. 
And then let me check the other pots. Okay, so in the other pots, I see the Rob Romero mix. I do see something has germinated there. And I also see some germination in the miracle Grow cactus soil. One thing interesting is because the pumice is so light colored, it doesn't contrast well against the germinated seedlings, so it's much, much harder to see. That's interesting. And then amongst some of my dummy pots here on the end, over here, I see obvious germination on the, I had sowed some Thello cactus hexadrophorus using my adult soil mix, and I do see a bunch of germination there. Let's see if you can see that. Let's see what else. And I think that the germination that I'm seeing amongst our experiment soil is all the astrophytum because uh, I don't think I see anything on the Areocarpus, but Areocarpus take longer to germinate. They just do. Though I do see germination on um, my dummy pot with the East Coast Kamenchaka soil, I see Areocarpus fissuratus coming up. Wow, this is really, really interesting. Let me see if I can get anything on camera. There's just no way you see the reflection here. Okay, okay maybe I'll do it like this. Okay, let me see. Okay, that's the East Coast Common Chaka Soil Astrophytum Hybrid. You can see it's very obvious, the little germinated seedlings. Okay, there we go. Let's see, yeah, that pot should have some in it. And then the mics were plants. Lofo Pro Soil. See that one guy sticking up there? I don't know if you can see there at all. This is the Miracle Grow Cactus Soil. I see one guy that germinated. And then the Rob Romero mix. Yeah, you can see little green guy there. So day number four, very interesting. Okay, so I know what I'm gonna do when I do the filming in the future. I have to cover the reflection of the light. We will continue checking in. Sorry, this was a very rough video, but here's day number four. We'll be back. It has now been almost exactly a week since I sowed these seeds, and there is a lot of activity going on in here. And, shoot try this again. So the number one performer is the East Coast Kamenchaka Seed Starter Kit. Oh, let's see if I can even get in here if you can see. Mm, I cannot see my screen at all. There's one of the pots. There's another one. I think you can see the little green yellow seedlings poking up. Oh yeah, I think that one you can definitely see. And that pot, this pot right here, is actually Aerial Carpus. So those two are Astrophytum hybrids, and then the last one is an Astrophytum hybrid. I don't know if you can see that at all. But the most has come up from the East Coast Kamenchaka seed starting kit, so I don't know what magic potion he has in there, but it is working really, really well. And then, I mean, even the Aerial Carpus. That's insane. I'd say that the number two performer is the Mike's Rare Plants uh, Loafer Pro Seed Starter Mix. Let me see if I can, like, um, like this pot. Lots of stuff coming up. Pot there. This is all Astrophytum. I don't know how much you can really see. And then, um, sorry, the Areocarpus has not come up yet. And then the astrophytum in the last pot has. And then I would say those, really the two premium soils are the top two performers at this point. Um, I would say third and fourth place is the Unigro. Uh, let's see if we can see. That's the Unigro soil. That one. 
let's see, this is the Aerocarpus pot. Yeah, even this uh, Unigrow has some Aerocarpus. It's got one Aerocarpus seedling that I can see. And then the last pot over here is Astrophytum. I don't know if you can see, but there's some Astrophytum coming up. Uh, so the next pot that's actually doing kind of in maybe tied for third place is the miracle Grow Cactus Soil, which is really interesting as well. The one that I hated working with the most. Um, I see one Aerocarpus seedling in there. don't know if you can see that little tiny green speck. Let's see, there's some Astrophytum that have come up. I don't know if I'm aiming my camera at all. Uh, some Astrophytum. Very hard to see. And the Astrophytum is a little... Oh, a little light stressed and the color makes it kind of blend in. I'd say maybe this is fourth place. I'll put Unigrow as third place. Fourth place is the Miracle Grow um, cactus soil. Fifth place, I would say, is the Rob Romero mix. Let me see what, if we can see anything from here. Oops, there's definitely some astrophytum in the that pot. And then that pot for sure. And the last pot, there's some seedlings popping up there as well. And then as far as the Aerocarpus pot goes, I don't, th I don't think I see anything in there yet. And then the last place, <laughs> sixth place, believe it or not, is my... Miracle Grow Seed Starter with Miracle Grow Perlite, which is, I think, is just hilarious. Let's see what we've got. Um, uh, I don't know where my camera is aimed, but there's definitely an astrophytum in the pot on the edge. Um, I don't think I see any Aerocarpus. And uh, let's see. I can't really. S oh, there is some, some something that's come up in this pot, which I cannot see through the viewfinder at all. And then the last pot has something that came up. It's really kind of hard to tell the true placing because I'm not counting the number of seeds that have, or uh, seedlings that have come up, but number one is really clear and I'd say last place is really clear. Second, third place is a little closer, but uh, yeah, that's what it's like after a week. As far as my little extra pots over here. Um, they're actually doing pretty well. I don't know if you can, let's, let me try. I think that one's aerial, I cannot read through the condensation. I think that might be aerial carpus. This might be aerial carpus too. You can see it's already coming up. And this is the leftover uh, Mike's Rare Plant Soil, so it's doing quite well with the, with those seeds. And then once again, Lofo Pro hints at a certain genus of plant, and it's actually doing very well with that genus. They're, they're all coming up. And then I've got uh, these last, this last group of uh, this edge, you know, this edge pots. Got Aerocarpus fissuratus in just my adult mix, and it's doing really well. Then we've got Thallocactus hexadrophorus doing really, really well. I cannot believe how well they've germinated. And then we've got Aerocarpus retusus confucius coming up really nicely, just in my adult soil. And then the last one is Aerocarpus fissuratus again, using the leftover East Coast Kamenchaka soil, uh, and it's doing doing very well. Um, one thing that I think is interesting is I don't know if East Coast Kamenchaka, because you see this colorful top dressing there, that comes from his kit. It's leftover from his kit. I don't know if perhaps his top dressing has something in it to accelerate germination and growth as well, because I don't know, like look at how well these pots are doing. And they're, it's using his leftover top dressing. I can't prove it, but there's something about it. So we're at one week. Uh, I will be back. I don't know when. 
I think I'll definitely be maybe be back in a week for sure. So at two weeks, we'll do another update. And then I'll decide if I come back in the middle at some point. But very interesting so far. Hey everyone, I am back on day eight because I realized after I did this one week update that instead of just eyeballing the seeds uh, or the seedlings that germinated on first, second, third, and so on place, you know, why don't I just count it so I have definitive answers? So I did that. Let's go over the astrophytum seeds first. So if you recall, there are three pots per soil type of astrophytum seeds and there are 25 seeds per pot. So 75 seeds that were sowed total for the astrophytum. So in first place, we have East Coast Kamenchaka, 71 out of 75 seeds germinated. It is like miles away from everything else. Just incredible. I don't know what his special formula is. I swear there's something to do with the top dressing as well. In second place for Astrophytum, we have Mike's Rare Plants with 38 out of 75 seeds that have germinated at 8 days. Third place is over here, Unigrow. Unigrow, we got 31 seeds to germinate on Astrophytum out of 75. In fourth place is the Rob Romero Mix at 19 Astrophytum seeds that germinated out of 75. In fifth place, is the miracle Grow cactus soil. We got nine seeds to germinate out of 75. And in last place on the astrophytum seeds is the miracle Grow seed starter and miracle Grow perlite. So my mix is absolutely last place when growing astrophytum from seed. Okay, next on the Aerocarpus seed. So one pot out of these four is uh, Aerocarpus seeds from my own plant and I planted 25 aerial carpus seeds per pot. So in first place, we have again, East Coast Kamanchaka at 11 seeds out of 25 that have germinated after eight days. In second place, we have Unigrow. Uh, we got two out of 25 seeds to germinate after eight days. Then we have a tie for third place. So the Rob Romero mix, the miracle Grow Seed Starter and Perlite and the miracle Grow Cactus Mix are all tied at one seed that germinated out of 25. And in last place, we have Mike's Rare Plant uh, Lovo Pro Seed Starter or Seed Soil. No, um, got zero germination for the aerial carpus seed so far uh, at eight days. So I will come back probably at 14 days, so at two weeks, and do another update to see if things have changed. One note that I do want to make for the Mike's um, Lofo Pro Soil is I did I did sow aerial carpus other types of aerial carpus seeds on these like kind of these dummy pots at the end, and those actually are coming up. So you know there's always some variability, but let's see. Um, in my experience, I find that aerial carpus seeds tend to take longer to germinate, whereas astrophytum are tend to be faster when the seeds are fresh. So maybe it hasn't been long enough, but but let's let's wait and see. Because interestingly, when I used other soil with the East Coast Kamenchaka tops, top dressing um, with aerial carpus seeds, look at how crazy. That's aerial carpus fissuratus at eight days. Look at how many seeds have come up. I did another pot, I think over here. I don't know if you can see that at all. But a lot of the, these fissurata seeds have come up, and I'm really surprised at how fast they came up. And I don't know if it's because of the seed, because of my seed soil at the end, because I have a mix of my own adult soil, and I think maybe leftover East Coast Kamanchaka seed soil. Plus, I'm using his top dressing for these pots, so I don't know. Like These pots here at the end are doing really well, and I don't know why. Anyway, I'll be back later, and we'll do another update see how things are going. One more thing I wanted to mention, I just signed off and then I, this, came, this suddenly came to me, is that I used pumice as the top dressing for all of the soils except East Coast Kamenchaka because East Coast Kamenchaka uh, delivers top dressing with his soil kit. I don't know if there's something about my top dressing that is, you know, preventing seeds from coming up. I, I don't know. There is something about his top dressing, though I can't truly prove it, 
unless I do another experiment. There's something about his top dressing that just does really well. It like encourages germination or something, I don't know. Because when I use his topsoil on these dummy pots, these pots are also doing really, really well compared to the other side dummy pots that I've got the pumice as topsoil. And those seeds are coming up. They're actually coming up okay, but just not as vigorous as the, the ones on the other side. So I really don't know if the pumice has something to do with this, which means that someday I'll have to do like a pump, a top dressing comparison using the same soil and then varying the top dressing to see if, if it makes a difference. So maybe it's something I can consider in the future. All right, now I'm really signing off. We are on day number 16. It's still the Thanksgiving holiday and I kind of missed the two week mark. Um, so let's go ahead and see how things are doing. A lot more seeds have come up since last time. And I have been doing periodic check-ins without doing recording. So in the end of this uh, first video, I will put up a chart with the progress from day to day. So all the records that I took and you can kind of see which mixes the seeds came up the fastest in terms of germination. And then um, you can see over time what comes up in which soil, which is, I find to be fascinating. So on day 16, where are we at? On the astrophytum, the number one soil is still East Coast Common Chaka, which is this colorful topsoil here. Uh, we're still at 74 seeds that have germinated. That'd be that pot, that pot, that pot. In second place for astrophytum, it would be Mike's Rare Plants at 56 seeds that have germinated. That pot, and those two pots in the back. In third place, we have Unigro with 52 seeds that have germinated, but there has been one, uh, one seedling that rotted. Let's see, Unigro is over here. So uh, that row there, right in the center of the camera screen, there and there. In fourth place is the Rob Romero mix, which is oh, here, it's right next to the Unigro, at 50 seeds that have germinated. And I don't even know if you can see there. In fifth place, we have the My Miracle Grow Seed Starter and Perlite. Uh, that would be this, uh, wait, I think it's Miracle Grow. Oh, this one. This one right here, right, right in the center. Uh, Astrophytum, 29 seeds germinated. And now in last place is the Miracle Grow Cactus Mix. So it seems that my seed starter mix is now at least not in last place. So Miracle Grow Cactus Soil, uh, we got 20 seeds that germinated for the Astrophytum. And uh, let's see, so for the East Coast Kamanchaka Astrophytum, some of that, like the first aerials on the seedlings are already appearing. I actually noticed them a few days ago. Because it came up so quickly, these seedlings are going to be ahead of everybody else in terms of growth, unless, you know, something in the soil just makes the other seeds grow faster. But so far, yeah, those little tiny Astrophytum cactus bodies or aerials are starting to show up. And not just East Coast Kamanchaka, some of the older seedlings like in the Mike's Rare Plants, same thing, starting to come up. Um, let's see, even the Rob Romero mix, maybe it's not as obvious, but there are some where the aerials are starting to show up. Same thing with Unigro, they're in the back. Hard to see, but I, you might be able to catch that. Next up is the Aerocarpus. In first place, we have East Coast Common Chaka. Oh, by the way, the Aerocarpus are the, is the second row in. So East Coast Common Chaka is number one. At 16 days, we have 16 Aerocarpus seeds that have come up. Looking good. 
In second place, we have a tie between the Raw Bromero mix right there. Oh, my point. No, sorry. Ah, Raw Bromero mix is right here. Okay, we've got, in second place. We have tied the Raw Bromero mix and the My Miracle Grow seed starting mix. That would be the one right next door here. These two are tied for second place at 11 seeds that have germinated for aerial carpus. In third place, we have a tie between Unigro and Mike's Rare Plant. So Unigro would be right here. We have uh, 10 seeds that have germinated. And Mike's Rare Plants is uh, right here. See those little green, little green guys? And in fourth place, we have the Miracle Grow Cactus Mix, which is this one. This one's really falling behind. It only has uh, three seeds that have germinated. So that's where we are at 16 days. I will be back in another week and see how they're doing at, hopefully I'll catch 21 days, but you know, sometimes I forget that it, <laughs> when it's the right day, but I'll catch up. All right, I'll catch you back in about five days. We have now made it to three weeks and I'm still struggling, of course, of trying to record through this dome. But there definitely has been more progress on germination since the last update at, what was it, 16 days or something? So we are now five days later. So at this point, let's take a look at where we're at. So for the Astrophytum, first place is probably always going to remain uh, East Coast Kamenchaka. So we are still at uh, 74 seedlings that germinated out of 75, and it's this pot again with the colorful top dressing and you can you can really see the seedlings there and they're they're doing very well looking very robust in second place we have Unigro at 57 astrophytum seedlings that have germinated oops am I po I'm pointing at the wrong pot is this one here here here, oh, and then that thing's in the way, and then that pot back there for astrophytum. In third place, we have Mike's Rare Plants on astrophytum. We have 56 out of 75 astrophytum seeds that have germinated. And right there, and that pot in the back. In fourth place, we have Rob Romero's mix over, let's see, where am I pointing at? Here, at 55 seeds that have germinated out of 75. And that one, and then that pot back there. So the Mike's Rare Plants at 56 seeds, the Unigro at 57 seeds, the Romero mix at 55 seeds are kind of all grouped together. They're all like within two seeds of each other that have germinated. Then in fifth place, we have my miracle Grow seed starter mix at 34 seeds that have germinated. There, and then back there. And then in last place, we have the miracle Grow cactus soil. Wait, I hope I really hope I was pointing in the right pots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Here's the Miracle Grow cactus soil. So for astrophytum, in last place we have 24 astrophytum seeds that have germinated out of 75. So we have like a very clear distinction between first place and then we have a group that's like kind of in the 50s range um, of three different soils and then we've got like these last two Miracle Grow soil mixes for astrophytum that are kind of in the last place, but definitely that cactus mix is not really great for growing astrophytum from seed, at least when it comes to germination. 
And um, you know, once we get done with looking at how many seeds have germinated, then we're gonna really focus on how the seedlings look. Because some of these seedlings, even though they germinated, they don't look very robust, unlike um, East Coast Common Chaka. Oops, that one. Mike's Rare Plants, those look pretty robust. I think Unigrow looks pretty robust, as does uh, Rob Romero's mix. But like the miracle Grow Cactus Soil, the seedlings that, they ca that came up, they're not looking as robust. And I don't know if it's because they came up later or what. But anyway, something to note. Now comes the Areocarpus seeds. So in first place, it's still East Coast Kamanchaka. We have now 17 seeds that have germinated out of 25. In second place, we have a tie between the Rob Romero mix and the miracle Grow seed starter mix. So this is the Rob Romero mix with Areocarpus. We have 13 seeds that have germinated. And here's my miracle Grow seed starter mix. 13 Areocarpus seedlings. In third place, we have a tie between Unigrow and Mike's Rare Plants. So here's Unigrow. We have, let's see, 11 seeds, Areocarpus seeds that have germinated. Uh, so that's Unigrow. And then over here, we have Mike's Rare Plants, LLC. See the little green dots in there? And in last place, which would be fourth place because we have all those ties, we have the miracle Grow Cactus Mix. This has not been making any progress since the last time that we did an update, so there's still only three seedlings, or uh, seeds that germinated out of 25. Let's see if we can see any of the, oops. I think you can kind of see on the right-hand side, it's a little green dot, and there's one up above is really hard, it's kind of buried under the topsoil. And there's one more, it's really hard to see, but there's three seedlings in there. So you can see the numbers kind of changing over time. And uh, you know, we're three weeks in and there's still seeds coming up. So I will be back in a week and that will complete four weeks of watching these guys come up and logging who is germinating the fastest and how many no seeds that we actually got to germinate. So I will meet you all back here in a week. I am back. We are now at four weeks. And so let's see how we are doing. So for Astrophytum, I just did the count today. In first place, we are still with East Coast Kamenchaka at 74 Astrophytum seeds that have germinated out of 75. In second place, we have Rob Romero. Let's see, where's Rob Romero? Rob Romero's over here. We have 58 Astrophytum seeds that have germinated out of 75. The pot there. And the pot back there. In third place, we have a tie between Unigrow and Mike's Rare Plants. So Unigrow is over here for Astrophytum. And the pot back here. Sorry, it's gonna be real, oh, long pot. Uh, this pot, Unigrow, Astrophytum. Some of the plants are kind of hard to see because their color kind of blends in with the pumice. And Mike's Rare Plants is over here. As you can see, there's a little volunteer, or a big volunteer there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to pull that out. This pot actually germinated quite well for Astrophytum. It's kind of hard to see. Let's see, now we've got this pot. Astros, and we've got that last pot there. That third place was 57 Astrophytum seeds that germinated out of 75 for Unigrow and Mike's Rare Plants. Sorry about that if I forgot it. In fourth place is the Miracle Grow Seed Starter with Miracle Grow Perlite. And let me sure, make sure I am actually pointed at the right pot. So, Miracle Grow Seed Starter got 37 Astrophytum seeds that germinated out of 75. This one. And the pot back there. Sorry, it's really hard to see. And in last place for Astrophyta, we have the miracle Grow Cactus Soil with 25 seeds that have germinated 
And when I look at the seedlings for the miracle Grow cactus mix, they don't, they don't look very robust like the other ones. Uh, some of them look okay, but some of them just don't look all that great. Like, look at the pot next to it. Even the pot to the left. That's really hard to see there. There's one more pot there. So that is the astrophytum at four weeks. Next, let's look at the Areocarpus. So for Areocarpus, in first place, we have East Coast Kamenchaka with 18 Areocarpus seeds that germinated out of 25. You can zoom in a little further. You can see those little tiny Areocarpus. In second place, we have the Rob Romero mix, which is over here, with 16 Areocarpus seeds that germinated out of 25. In third place, we have a tie between Unigrow and the miracle Grow seed starter with 15 seeds or 15 Areocarpus seeds that germinated out of 25. This is the Unigrow. And then let me find the seed starter is right here. Uh, yeah, right here. So, you know, looking at the numbers, the seed starter, the miracle Grow seed starter is better at growing or seems to do better with Areocarpus, like it, than uh, Astrophytum. I think that's going to change my uh, soil mix for growing Astrophytum in the future, because the other soils besides the Miracle Grow cactus soil is outperforming the um, seed starter from Miracle Grow. In fourth place, we have Mike's rare plants for Areocarpus. We got 13 seeds to germinate out of 25. You see the little guys in there? And in last place is the miracle Grow cactus soil. We only got three seeds that germinated. They're not looking great. You can probably barely even see them in the camera. Let's see if I can show you. One of them is right there, right in the center of the screen. So, you know, now I'm going to put up um, a spreadsheet table that I put together so we can see how the germination progressed over time. And let's talk through that. Um, before we move on to the tables, let's see how these seedlings look at a month old. So this is the East Coast Kamenchaka soil with the astrophytum. And the uh, seeds came up pretty quickly in the soil and so you can kind of see where the seedlings are at at this point. Definitely got their little baby cactus body starting to push out. Uh, you can see that little white fuzziness, some aerials there. I think that one that's right in the center of the screen looks, got, looks like it has about five aerials on it. So, you know, these came up so fast, so they're going to be, they should be, if it makes any sense, you know, progressed further than some of the other seedlings that came up later. Let me find another example. Uh, here's an example of the Unigrow seedlings. See how they look at one month old. Also some uh, aerials definitely showing up. Maybe not quite as developed as the East Coast Kamenchaka. Soil. Let's look at another pot. What's another? Yeah, let's, that pot's another. Oh, that's really hard to see. Let me see if this is uh, very hard to see. Let me find another example. Let's do the Rob Romero mix. So this is what the astrophytum look like at one month. I'm having a hard time seeing my viewfinder because of Grow lights, but you can see, yeah, Ariel is also developing, but you know, the, the progress is just not as far along as the East Coast common chaka soil since those seeds came up so quickly. Um, let's look at the Miracle Grow seed starter. Uh, am I pointing? Okay, there we go. Seed starter. You can see a lot of those little seed shells are still stuck to the plant. Also, Ariel's developing, but just the same comment. 
And then Miracle Grow Cactus Oil. Some of these have aerials like showing up. You got one right in the center of the screen. But like the size and color of the plants in the Miracle Grow Cactus Oil, they just don't look as robust to me as the plants in the other soils. Sorry, I really cannot see the viewfinder. So I'm just blindly pointing <laughs> at the pot. Now let's look at Mike's Word Plants. See the astrophytum development? Here it is at a month. Kind of the same comment. It's right next to the East Coast Kamenchaka pot. So these are the two premium soils so you can kind of see the seedling development uh, after four weeks. See them side by side. Now let's take a closer look at the aerial carpus development after a month. So this is East Coast Kamenchaka. Now these seeds came up the fastest for aerial carpus. See if I can really zoom in. There we go. There we go. Hopefully that's still in focus. I believe we can see the beginnings of the tubercle. Oh yeah, definitely. Look at that. So obvious tubercle. Let's see what the other ones look like. Here's the um, Mike's Rare Plant, Areocarpus. We really, really zoom in. I don't think I see aerials yet. I mean, on the East Coast common chaga, those are tubercles that are starting to appear. Let's see, so Miracle Grow Cactus Soil is not doing well with Areocarpus at all. Let's see, can we see anything? I think I see a little sign of a tubercle or aerial on that seedling. Let me go to the seed starter, Miracle Grow. Honestly, it actually, the germination was better than I had anticipated. So the Miracle Grow seed starter isn't that bad for aerial carpus, at least to get them to germinate. I'm seeing just the most, most Barely beginnings of tubercle aerial development. Then there's the Rob Romero mix. Also, you know, doing quite well. See the very beginnings of the tubercle aerial development. It's pretty obvious on those couple seedlings. And then we've got the Unigro soil mix. It's the aerial carpus at one month or four weeks. It's kind of dark under grow lights again. It doesn't work well. The grow lights don't work well with the camera. But hopefully you can kind of see that. And we're also, you know, shooting through the clear dome, which is distorted. But here it is. Yeah. One month or four weeks of uh, growing on aerial carpus and astrophytum. Also, maybe I'll make a comment on these dummy pots here at the end. So this is actually my adult soil mix that I used, just as an experiment. It's pumice mixed with uh, Unigro. And then the top dressing, this colorful top dressing, is all from East Coast Kamenchaka. It's leftovers that I used. And this is Areocarpus, Thelocactus, Areocarpus. And then this last pot is Areocarpus in uh, leftover East Coast Kamenchaka soil plus his top dressing. And look how abundant these pots are. I just dumped like my, uh, what is that, all my fissurata seeds into that pot and I think uh, this pot here, they're doing pretty well, very surprised. And then the other dummy pots are on this side. This is actually, I think it's, let me see, what is this? This is all leftover Mike's rare plant soil. Remember his soil is called Lofo Pro soil. So I have a couple pots of the genus of plant that fits that name. Eh, this one's really not doing that great. This one's doing okay, but I'm pretty sure I put more seeds than that in there. They're alive. And then I have two pots of Areocarpus. There are different seeds than the ones from the uh, other side on the dummy pots, but I swear I thought I saw some stuff come up, but I cannot find any seedlings in either of these two pots. Yeah, it's just not obvious. Of course, there's a lot of green algae, so it could be hiding. 
the seedlings, but I can't see it obviously. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how the dummy pots are doing. All right, now let's go ahead and look at the uh, table on the Excel sheet. All right, let's start with a table of all the costs of those six soils. This video ended up being a lot longer than I thought, so let's go back and review what we talked about earlier. So in this table, I have all six of the different types of soils that I used in this video and in this experiment. I have the volume listed, the total cost, and then the cost per two and a half inch nursery pot. So let's just start at the top. These are not really listed in any particular order. So the first soil mix that we have is the miracle Grow Seed Starter and the miracle Grow Perlite. This is the soil mix that I had been using in my A Lazy Way to Grow Cactus from Seed series. It seems to work fairly okay for Copiapoa, but it's kind of up in the air for other cactus genus or other plant genuses. So this was a good chance to to test it on Areocarpus and Astrophytum. So the miracle Grow Seed Starter and Perlite comes in two bags at eight quarts each. So if you wanna use this seed mix, you have to buy both bags. So the total cost was $13.94 to purchase those two bags. By the way, all of the prices listed here are before sales tax and sales tax varies from you know where, wherever it is that you're at. As I mentioned in my video earlier, the way that I calculated the volume of a two and a half inch nursery pot, it came out to be about 12 cubic inches. So I Googled how many cubic inches are in a dry quart, and that is how I did the calculation. So for the first soil mix, it comes out to 18 cents per two and a half inch nursery pot. The second soil mix is the miracle Grow Cactus Palm and Citrus Potting Mix, which came in a bag that was eight quarts. So one bag cost $6.97. And if I do the same calculation, it comes out to also 18 cents per two and a half inch nursery pot. All the miracle Grow products came from Home Depot for me, but you can find them at many big box stores um, in the United States. The third soil mix is the Unigrow Cactus Mix. This I purchased at Arizona Cactus Sales. It came in a cubic foot bag and it was $20. And the way that I did the calculation to translate that cubic foot into cost per pot was a little bit roundabout as I was reviewing my calculations. So the way that I had calculated it originally was I converted cubic feet into dry quartz. So that came out to be 25.71 dry quartz. And I just found that number on Google. And so I did kind of a indirect conversion from cubic feet to quartz to cubic inches, which in reality, why did I have to convert it to quartz in the first place? I don't know why I did that. I could have just converted it from cubic feet to cubic inches directly, which would be more straightforward. But by doing the calculation this way, the Unigrow Cactus Mix came out to be 16 cents per two and a half inch pot. Although I did a calculation without doing the quart conversion, and that number actually comes out to be about 14 cents. And it really bothers me that the two methods of calculations comes with, you know, comes to different answers. You might be able to guess what kind of industry I work in. But, you know, so it's somewhere around 14 or 16 cents per two and a half inch pot. We'll just consider it 16 cents. The fourth mix is Rob Romero's mix, which is 60% pumice with 20% mushroom compost and 20% native soil. So I consider the native soil to be free. So the pumice I purchased from Arizona Cactus Sales, uh, it, it came in a one cubic foot bag and it was $20. The mushroom compost I purchased from Home Depot uh, it also came in a cubic foot bag and it was $2.48. So the total cost for me to buy these components was $22.48. And if I do the proportions and do the calculations on the cost per two and a half inch pot, it came out to be about 10 cents per two and a half inch pot. So this calculation was also a little convoluted where I converted to dry quartz and then into cubic inches. If I had skipped that conversion to quartz, perhaps it would come out to be about eight cents. Uh, I didn't actually do the calculation. That's just by guessing based off the Unigrow calculation. So somewhere about eight to 10 cents or so per two and a half inch pot. 
The fifth soil is the, one of the premium soils that I purchased from East Coast Kamenchaka. It's his seed starting soil kit that I purchased off of Etsy. And with shipping for, I would say it's about a quart worth of material. He doesn't list it as a quart. He just lists it as a small size. So it's my guess that it's roughly a quart. And it came with rocks that you put at the bottom of the pot, the soil. And it also came with the top dressing, meaning that you don't have to supplement anything with his kit. Uh, he gives you everything that you need to grow. The total cost with shipping was $22.50. And if I use the guess of about a quart, then the calculation comes out to $4.68 per two and a half inch nursery pot. So in the video, when I actually potted up the soil and was sowing the seeds, I could actually count the actual number of two and a half inch pots that I could fill with that volume of soil um, that came with the whole kit. And if I redo the calculation based off of my actual potting up, it comes out to be slightly less expensive at $4.50 per two and a half inch pot. And the last soil is the other premium soil from Mike's Rare Plants. It's his Lofo Pro seed soil that comes with extras. Uh, with shipping for a one quart size, it was $25.10. And if I do the calculation per two and a half inch pot, it comes out to $5.22. But in my potting up again of the soil and sowing the seeds, I actually got seven pots, two and a half inch pots out of the volume of soil that he sent me. So it actually comes out to $3.59 per two and a half inch pot. So you can see here that the prices really range. We're talking about 10 cents per pot, all the way up to $4.50 a pot. Um, it is quite a range of pricing. And we've got four of the soils kind of in the same ballpark, but definitely Rob Romero's mix is the least expensive, partially because the mushroom compost is so inexpensive. And then of course the native soil is free. Um, and then we come to the, you know, something that's kind of in the ballpark with Unigrow, with the miracle Grows, And then we have the two premium soils, which are in their own category of pricing for soils. Now let's look at the performance of the six soils over the first four weeks. And in this case, we're focused on germination. At first, I thought I would show the data in table format, but now I'm realizing that a chart like this or a plot really, really shows what's going on. So here we see the astrophytum germination over the 28 days. And remember that there were 75 seeds that were sowed per soil. So on this chart, on the x-axis, we have the day. So on you know, all those numbers that I logged over time, um, I had logged at eight days. I think I was updated at 16 days, then 21 days, and then 28 days. But I also have some of the numbers in between those days early on in the germination. So all the data is shown here, and it's really interesting because it makes it very obvious what's been going on. So there's about three, kind of three groupings of these soils. The very obvious one is that the East Coast common chaka just outperformed everybody. We were really close to 100% germination right off the bat. I mean, at eight days, I think we were at 71 seeds that had already germinated. And then after that, it was just a consistent 74 seeds after that. So not quite 100% germination, but very, very close. And we can see from my video that those seedlings are definitely further along in development compared to everybody else. I mean, they just came up so quick. The other obvious group is on the lowest performance, which are the two miracle Grow mixes. So the orange line and dots are the miracle Grow seed starter with perlite, and that light blue color is the miracle Grow cactus mix. We can see that the miracle Grow cactus soil is the worst performer out of all of the soils. But we do get 25 seeds that germinated out of 75, although they don't look as good as the other seedlings that came up. And in fifth place, you can see the miracle Grow seed starter, which does better than the cactus, the miracle Grow cactus soil, but it's also underperforming compared to everybody else. And in the end, we got 37 seeds to come up in the miracle Grow seed starter mix. 
This actually sheds light on something is that I've been using the Miracle Grow Seed Starter Mix for pretty much everything. And I remember when I started growing Astrophytum, I sowed them in, I forgot if it was like a Kellogg cactus mix, and they came up great, but they were growing really slowly and I couldn't tell why. It's possible because I made so many mistakes in the beginning and they were being transplanted when they were really young. That's a possibility. But then somebody recommended the seed starter mix and I transplanted those astrophytum seeds into the seed starter and then they just took off like they did way better. So what became really confusing after this experience was that because the astrophytum were growing better with the miracle Grow seed starter mix, I automatically thought, oh, this mix is way better for growing astrophytum. However, going forward, then I was using this seed starter for all of the astrophytum seeds, and I wasn't getting very good performance. First of all, germination was not that great. And second of all, later on, they would die off really easily, like the seedlings would just start rotting. Basically, I couldn't repeat the performance from the very first time that I ever accidentally or haphazardly sowed astrophytum from seed. So there's always been this question mark in my mind that I didn't understand. And perhaps this experiment may help shed light on that. So I have a question mark right now, but it's clear that for germination, the miracle Grow mixes aren't the best for astrophytum. There's better stuff out there and we're seeing that here. Now, I don't know that after germination, if the astrophytum would benefit from the miracle Grow mix, that we don't know. But uh, we'll see even with this experiment as time goes on on how those seedlings do. The last group are the red, yellow, and green color lines that you can see and dots. So those are, for red is Mike's Rare Plants, yellow is Unigrow, and green is Rob Romero's mix. So you can see that Mike's Rare Plants comes up faster in the beginning and then kind of not too far behind it is Unigrow, and then Rob Romero's mix actually looks like it comes up way slower in the beginning. But as time goes on, they start to converge. And you can see that around three weeks and definitely at four weeks, they're almost exactly the same. So we'll watch those over time and see how they do. Now, in terms of what I can take away from this is that for growing astrophytum from seed, I am not going to use the miracle Grow mix, um, especially for germination, when I have other soils that I can choose from that do better than the miracle Grow mixes. And if I'm concerned about cost, then I've got the Unigrow and I've got Romero, Rob Romero's mix as options. But it is interesting that the East Coast Kamenchaka seed starter it definitely clearly outperforms everybody else. Now let's look at the aerial carpus germination over the four weeks. And just as a reminder, again, we had 25 seeds sowed per soil. On the X axis, we still have the, the day number. And on the Y axis, we have the number of seeds that germinated. And this plot is very interesting to look at as well. So it's very obvious about the best performer and the worst performer. The best performer, again, is East Coast Common Chaka. His seeds came up faster in the beginning, and then it just continued to outperform everybody else. I think in the end, we had 18 seeds that germinated out of 25. The worst performer is also very obvious. It is the miracle Grow cactus soil. And you can see that <laughs> it kind of came up and then it just got stuck at three. So three seeds germinated out of 25 and it's just stuck there. And we you know we looked at the seedling status as of now and they don't look that great, but you know, let's see what happens over time. Now the other four soils are really interesting because they're kind of all grouped together in a way and they kind of swap in terms of who's doing the best at any given time. So I find that to be very fascinating. In the beginning, you can see, uh, let's see, green is Rob Romero's mix, orange is the miracle Grow seed starter with perlite, yellow is Unigrow, and red is Mike's Rare Plants. You can see in the very beginning, they're kind of similar. I would say Mike's Rare Plants Lofo Pro soil is slightly underperforming compared to the other three. And then over time, 
you can see that Romero's mix kind of has a big bump between, I think it was like nine days and maybe 11 days, uh, the, the third, second and the third point over there. It like suddenly has this huge jump. And then they kind of converge around day 16. Like they're probably within about two seeds uh, or two germinated seeds within each other. And then when we reach 21 days, they're still kind of close to each other, even though the miracle Grow seed starter and Romero's mix has a, a bigger gap with the Unigro and the Mike's Rare plants. And then once we reach 28 days, you can see that Romero's mix actually outperforms the other three. The miracle Grow seed starter and the Unigro are kind of on par with each other. They're the same at the end at 15 seeds that germinated. And then Mike's Rare plants actually doesn't do quite as well as those other three soils um, at 28 days. But they're kind of all grouped together, you know, somewhere within maybe three germinated seeds of each other. So I find this to be quite interesting as well. One thing that surprised me was that the miracle Grow seed starter and perlite actually performed better than I thought it would. Because you all have seen me struggling with growing Areocarpus from seed, but it's possible Perhaps it's not a soil issue. Perhaps it is that I need to keep them covered for longer, but we're going to find out. What I'm planning to do is that the Astrophytum and Areocarpus are all in the same tray right now. And then over time, if we end up finding that the Astrophytum can come out of the high humidity environment earlier, I will continue to keep the Areocarpus covered. I'm planning to keep them covered for much longer than I've done in the past to see if this was the issue that I've had you know, the, in the lazy way to grow cactus from seed, none of the Areocarpus made it. And they were all grown and sowed in the miracle Grow seed starter mix with perlite. So this will be interesting to see as well. Um, and then again, in this case, we can see that East Coast common chaka soil outperforms everybody else again. But let's see what happens over time. The other thing that's interesting is that the East Coast common chaka soil is doing better for both Areocarpus and Astrophytum. Whereas I would say Unigro and Rob Romero's mix and Mike's rare plants are kind of also about the same between Areocarpus and Astrophytum. But when it comes to the miracle Grow seed starter with perlite, clearly it does okay with Areocarpus, but it does not do okay with Astrophytum. And then with all those Copiapoa seeds that I sowed, I use the miracle Grow seed starter mix as well. This makes me think that some soils may be better as an all-purpose, meaning that it can actually do well with many different genus of cactus and succulents, whereas other soils are actually better at certain genuses of cactus than others. And that certainly makes it more complicated. It would be nice if we can find that soil that can do well for a wide range of genuses. And you can see that the miracle Grow seed starter is not one of those. The last thing that I want to do here is to put all of the data onto one screen for you so you can see it all at once. We have the two plots for the performance of the six soils, and then we have the table with the cost of the six soils. You see here that in terms of performance, East Coast Common Chaka's seed starting kit clearly outperforms everybody else. However, if we look at the cost, the East Coast Common Chaka soil costs $4.50 per two and a half inch pot. Whereas if you look at Unigro and Rob Romero's mix, where it's 10 cents, 16 cents a pot, they actually do okay. And they do fairly well between both Astrophytum and Areocarpus, but it's just a lot less expensive. So that's something you do have to keep in mind about all of this as well. We have performance and we have cost. And so we have to think about both of them combined. Now there is one thing that this experiment does not look at is in the case of growing seeds that are notoriously difficult to germinate, notoriously difficult to grow from seed. For example, something like Aztecium. So something like that would be interesting to test on these soils, but Aztecium is just not something that I'm interested in growing, so I won't be running that experiment. But I'm just 
you know, in my mind, I'm rolling thoughts around in the case of these types of seeds that are notoriously difficult to grow, and they're probably expensive as well. Then we have to reconsider this in terms of the premium soils. We actually would need to experiment with it to see, because if, for example, East Coast common chaka soil does pretty well on estichium compared to everybody else, and it's a vast difference of, let's say, a couple seeds versus 20 or 30 seeds, and the seeds themselves are very expensive, then that's a different story. So I just want to put that out there because that type of experiment is not being shown here, but it's something that's very valid when we're looking at price performance. So now what we'll do um, going forward is I will do monthly updates on how these seedlings are doing and we can see how the seedlings develop, how they do over time. Do they dampen off? Do they die off? Do some grow faster than others depending on the soil? So we will take a look at that. Um, I'm also would like to do some more experiments like mammalaria. You know, which soil would mammalaria do better in? We don't know. I don't have any more of the premium soils left, so but I do have plenty of soil of the other four. So at least we can run through some experiments with my remaining soil and, and try that out as well. Um, one thing I did not try is Copiapoa. Um, you know, Copiapoa is doing okay with the miracle Grow seed starter, but I have no idea if it would do even better in a different soil. So eventually we'd probably want to try that as well, but I don't think I have any Copiapoa seeds that are left, so I'd have to buy some to do that. But anyway, you know, things we can kind of consider going forward because I'm probably going to do this for a year as well. Um, and we can certainly add more experiments into, um, into this series as we move along. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this seed soil comparison video, um, our first episode in the series, and um, let me know what you think. All right, I'll see you in about four weeks to do the two-month update. Take care, bye-bye.